In this lesson, we want to review the multiplication property of equality. So in our last lesson, we reviewed the addition property of equality. Now this property allows us to add or subtract the same value to or from both sides of an equation. So generically, if we have something like, let's just say A equals B, we could say with the addition property of equality, I can add C to each side of the equation and maintain that equality, right? It's still true. So this allowed us to solve basic equations with just addition and subtraction, right? One step equations, very, very simple. Something like X minus 11 is equal to, let's say 17. What I wanna do when I solve an equation is just isolate the variable on one side. So if I wanna isolate X here on the left side, I've gotta undo what's being done to it. Here I'm subtracting away 11. So the opposite of subtracting away 11 is adding 11. So I'm gonna use my addition property of equality to just add 11 to each side of the equation. So I would have X minus 11 plus 11 equals 17 plus 11. So again, notice how I did it to the left and also the right. That's what made it legal. Over here, negative 11 plus 11 is zero. So I can just say this is X over here. So I've isolated the variable. And then here, 17 plus 11 is gonna give me 28. So X here would just be 28, right? 28 minus 11 does give me 17. So this is in fact the correct solution. Now we're gonna see more complicated linear equations, obviously, and we need more tools than just the addition property of equality. So in this lesson, we're gonna review something known as the multiplication property of equality. And this property basically tells us that we can multiply or divide both sides of an equation by the same non-zero number and not change the solution, okay? So the reason I say non-zero number is if you multiply both sides by zero, you get zero on each side, right? It's done for. If you divide by zero, it's undefined. So you have to put zero in as a restriction there, okay? So you gotta maintain that. So essentially what we're saying here is that if A is equal to B, then A multiplied by C is equal to B multiplied by C. So you maintain the equality, even though you've multiplied both sides by that same value C, but we would specify here that C does not equal zero, okay? So how can I use that to solve something like 3X equals 12? Well, let's erase this real quick. And again, I wanna write down my goal here, which is always, always, always to isolate the variable. Okay, we wanna isolate the variable. Very important to remember that. Stay focused on that goal. Well, if I wanna isolate the variable X, what's being done to X right now? X is being multiplied by 30. So how do I undo what's being done to the variable? Well, if I'm multiplying by 30, I just need to divide by 30. And again, the multiplication property of equality lets me divide both sides of the equation by three. So that's legal to do as long as I do it by both sides. So 3x divided by 3 is equal to 12 divided by 3. Now, 3 over 3 is 1, right? Any non-zero number divided by itself is 1. We already know that. Multiplying by 1 leaves a number unchanged. So essentially, this becomes 1 times x or just x, right? 1 is the multiplicative identity. So I can just write x here. I don't need 1x. This is equal to 12 divided by 3, which is just 4. So I get x equals 4 as my solution, right? So I can plug a four back in for X here and verify that I got a true statement. So three times four is equal to 12. We know that is correct, right? 12 equals 12. So we can go ahead and say that this guy is true, okay? Check that off and say, yes, X equals four is the correct solution. All right, let's take a look at another one. So we have X divided by five, or you can say X over five, it's in fractional form. This is equal to negative 20. So again, what's being done to X? We wanna undo that so that we can isolate, isolate the variable. If you just write this down each time, it's very, very simple to go through the steps and figure it out. If I want X by itself and it's being divided by five, just undo it, right? What can I do to undo division? Multiplication. So I would multiply both sides of the equation by five. So X over five times five is equal to negative 20 times five. And so this five will cancel with this five. Five over five is just one. One times X is just X. And this equals negative 20 times five is negative 100. Okay, so we're good to go there. Now, you can check this, plug in a negative 100 for X. So negative 100, divide that by five. This should be equal to negative 20. And it is, right? You get negative 20 
equals negative 20. So yes, this is a true statement. So we can check that and say, yes, this is true. All right, let's take a look at another one. So for this one, we're gonna do some simplifying first. We have three X plus six plus four X equals negative 15. So in any equation, you can always simplify things before you get going. And in this case, I know three X plus four X is seven X. So this is seven X then plus six, which is equal to negative 15. Now I can't solve this in one simple step, but I can solve it in two. I'm gonna use both of my properties here. I'm gonna use my addition property of equality and I'm gonna use my multiplication property of equality. Now, a lot of you would say, okay, seven is multiplying X, let's go ahead and undo that. Well, you can solve it that way, but it's gonna be much more complicated. The first thing you wanna do is get rid of this plus six part here, okay? You always want to isolate the variable term first, and then you can isolate the variable itself. So if I want to get rid of this six here, since it's being added to seven X, I just subtract it away. So seven X plus six minus six is equal to negative 15 minus six. So over here, if I look at this six minus six is zero. So I have seven X is equal to negative 15 minus six is going to be negative 21. So now I recognize this format from the last two problems. I have a single operation that I can do to get X isolated. Seven is multiplied by X, that's why you say seven X, and this is equal to negative 21. Well, if I'm multiplying X by seven, all I need to do is divide by seven to undo that. So this would cancel with this. Seven over seven is one, one times X is just X, and then negative 21 divided by seven is negative three. Okay, so X equals negative three here. So we can plug in and check. So let me erase all this. Since we have more than one instance of X here, we've got to make sure we plug a negative three into each copy, okay? So we have three times, plug in a negative three for X, and then plus six plus four times, plug in a negative three for X, and then we have is equal to negative 15. Three times negative three is negative nine, plus six, plus four times negative three is negative 12. So you can put plus negative 12 or you can just put minus 12. This should equal negative 15. Negative nine plus six is negative three. Negative three minus 12 is negative 15. So you get negative 15 equals negative 15, which is true, right? This is true. So you can go ahead and check this guy off and say X equals negative three is the correct solution. All right, let's take a look at one more of these. So we have negative 22 plus 56 X minus 35 is equal to negative 169. So again, I can simplify on the left here. Negative 22 minus 35 is negative 57. So I would have 56 X minus 57 is equal to negative 169. So before I do anything here, I wanna realize that I want to isolate the variable term before I isolate the variable itself. It just makes things easier. So what I'm gonna do, since I'm subtracting away 57 from the 56 X, I'm just gonna add 57 to both sides of the equation. Okay, that's all I'm gonna do. That's because subtracting away 57 and adding 57, those operations would cancel and become zero. So on the left, I would have 56 X, right? That's gonna cancel and be zero. And this is equal to negative 169 plus 57 is negative 112. So now I can isolate X by just dividing both sides by 56, right? Since 56 X means 56 is multiplying X. To undo that operation, I just divide by 56. So divide the left side and also the right side. So X would be equal to, you have negative 112 divided by 56, which is negative two. Okay, so that's our solution. And again, we can check this by plugging in a negative two for X there. Let me erase all this and let's drag this up here. And one note I wanna give you, if you've simplified the problem, that's fine. But you always wanna check it in terms of the original problem in case you made a mistake when you were simplifying. That'll help you catch the mistake, right? If you plug it back into something that you incorrectly simplified, you might verify something that wasn't correct, okay? So we wanna plug this in right here in the original equation. So we get negative 22 plus 56 times negative two, just plug in a negative two for X then minus 35 equals negative 169. And so 56 times negative two would be done first. That's gonna give me negative 112. So you would have negative 22 
minus 112 minus 35 equals negative 169. Negative 22 minus 112 is negative 134. And then negative 134 minus 35 is going to be negative 169. So you get negative 169 is equal to negative 169. So this is true, right? This is true. And we can say that this guy is the correct solution, right? X equals negative two.